interesting because sometimes our higher self stops us from manifesting what our third dimensional self thinks that we need. And so we have a contract from a higher space. And so a lot of times our guides will prevent those things from manifesting what we think we want is not what we're meant to be doing. And that put a difference, I, I mean, I knew that, but it sometimes you have to hear things several times in different ways, but that just sort of cemented that knowledge is that, yeah, we go through really horrible things, but those horrible things is what propels us to expand our awareness and our consciousness and open up to higher levels of spirituality. Some people say, well, we'll get into that victimhood and say, why is it always me and why did this happen? But if we step aside and see that it's part of a lesson for us to overcome so that we can evolve, then it, it changes the whole thing. Loving that you said that out of the blue, so you were recorded. Um, <laughs> this is why too people say well how do you know people are so busy trying to conjure and manifest and do stuff in the astral and that's why I say if you're supposed to be doing it you're already doing it you don't have to make a big deal of worrying about going on missions and, and picking up things to do because you could actually be getting in the way of the things that you're actually supposed to be doing. Um, and uh, it's so funny because too, I was thinking about externalized personalities because I was, I was just thinking about how people can be so affected by everything around them. And it's creating a lot of victimhood right now because it's like, you triggered me, you triggered me. And it's like, well, you you think you're. Policing other people by telling people how you triggered them, you triggered them or they triggered you, they triggered you. But what you've done is externalize your whole personality to absorb everything around you. And now you want to make it everyone else's fault. It's everyone else's problem. Like you don't have to announce all your triggers and let everyone know this is everything that you did because what the problem is, your authentic self is lost. Your authentic self is actually lost because everything around you affects you. And you know, what I've seen too is people justify all their behavior because of the way I grew up and because of the way my mommy treated me and because of the way and so that's an excuse for you to behave in a way where you know is actually wrong, right? You're justifying all your wrong based on your what? And you're you're justifying, you know, all your wrong based on things that have happened to you. How is that right when you know right from wrong, but you want to justify it? It's externalizing. And so I was around a uh, someone and I saw how they've taken on all the issues of someone else. These aren't things that they've went through, but they were maybe trying to be an advocate for someone else. And so now you're ex so involved in that person's problems that now every every standpoint that they have, like you've taken it on, the, the, you don't have to build your identity on that person. And this is like, say, straight people being around gay people or um, a person who uh, maybe being around a person who was traumatized with rape, because this is happening at the hospital. It's, it's such a strange thing. I couldn't bring my son into the VA hospital, into the exam room with me. My son is autistic and he's a teenager. Why should I have to leave him? Because another person said, well, men shouldn't be allowed back here because women have been raped and it was just a thing. And I thought, well, that thing that triggered or traumatized the other person is now the whole standard of how I'm being treated. Now I'm being mistreated because of the way someone else was mistreated. It was just a really imbalance. You know what I mean? Cause some women come to the hospital, they got their husbands or their children 
And so now it's like husbands and children aren't protected. <laughs> it was a, there's some other situations too, but to bring it back to the point of being your authentic self and your your traumas and your problems, like you have to deal with them yourself. And if all of your identity is based on your clothes, the amount of money you have, the friends you have, and your environment, then you're always going to be open to being triggered, and you won't ever conquer your your yourself. You know what I mean? Because the thing is to to to, to ascend and conquer is to what become to where you can be yourself, regardless of what's happening around you. If you can only be a Zen Buddhist at home at the perfect 78 degrees and with this amount of food and this amount of water, and it, it, this is the only time that you can find Zen, then you, you've not found it yet. You know what I mean? If everything someone says does, if every issue that goes on in the world turns you into a screaming maniac, then you're, you're not accomplishing what you need to accomplish. And I'll be quiet. No, so so I'm just going to throw this question. What does it mean then to be awakened? You know, is, you know, we talk about, oh, well, I've woke up. But, but what does it mean really to be awakened? Is, is it then taking responsibility for all that you have created in your life? And that brings another, you know, that that's another level to awakening, I think, is, is that, hey, wait a minute, I... I planned this. I need to take responsibility for all this stuff and blaming it on someone else and sitting, like you said, being that Zen Buddhist and, and whatever. Oh, I'm awakened is that's really quite self-serving, isn't it? You know, like I've done this and I've done that. Well, yeah, maybe. But does that mean that you're really, truly awakened to what you're what you're supposed to be doing? Um, it's just it, it means to get you there, but it's you're still on that path if you haven't if that hasn't happened. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that question out. And just what do you think? It made me think it oh, is awakened, meaning that every time you see something, you cry out loud. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my God. Does it mean that you panic at everything and you yell about everything? It just, it was when you, as soon as you said that, it made me think like this is what awakened appears to be for a lot of people or to be woke or awakened, it's starting to be very much similar, right? Is that you're constantly triggered by everything around you and you just want to scream about it. And it's funny because how, how I don't know how that's helping anybody, but um, that's just something that everyone can think on, on for themselves. Yeah. And what we can do right now, I was, we were going to discuss the cards that we got last week, oh my gosh, I sent them to you. And yeah. your card was the tribe. The tribe, yeah. And how have you have you seen that this week? Um, that week. Um, well, it, it's, in, it's interesting for me. Um, when those things happen, I integrate it into my week, and then I see as things unfold. And for me, a lot of times it's what have I been drawn to listen to? What have I been drawn to read? What are the conversations I have with people? And it's interesting that that becomes kind of a theme. And then um, the universe and, and I manifest that that melding together of those energies because I found that um, a lot of the conversations I've had with people this week have been related to that, to the tribe um, and, and um, things that I've decided to do, things that I've listened to. Um, so I believe that that, you know, when I go back to what I started off saying about manifesting, I've manifested those things to, you know, to, um, bring 
a certain aspect of, into my life that I'm different than I was a week ago because of the experiences that I've had with with talking with people, with interacting with people, with going out for a little walk here and there, although the weather hasn't been great here, but, you, you know, um, getting out and, and just talking with people, connecting with people who I haven't connected with for a few weeks and seeing how the journey goes between us. And, and there's sort of an overlying theme that, that, uh, that sort of that those cards I find they bring. And so it's in an integration about it. I don't stop and think about it, but at the end of the week, when I reflect, it's like, Oh yeah, that's a that's what I've been doing all week. So that's my experience with it. And how about yours, Erica? Well, interestingly enough, um, it's brought me more to family, like direct family, you know, with dealing with some things with my mother and I saw where I was in protection mode of her. She actually reached out to me for help. And I had to actually step up in that role, which is not like it's the first time, but maybe <laughs> this was maybe like a different capacity of someone harassing her and me having to actually step up and actually address that issue. Um, and be more like a matriarch role in my family where, you know, we grow up with such strong matriarchs in our family. It's hard to take that next step. And I think over the years I have been wondering like, like who can do this for our family? And I do believe it could be like a shared role. It doesn't have to be the, it's always you. And I think uh, me and my sisters, we, we kind of share that role, but that's where I saw it intensely. Um, another one of the cards that we had was spend time with pets. And then there was a beauty, uh, beauty ritual. And then there was dancing and letting it flow. That's the part that really stood out for me, though, is my cat has been really bossing me around and telling me what to do. It's really funny. And so he'll tell me what he wants to eat. He'll go and stand in front. He'll like, ah! and then he goes stand in front of it. But what he did was so interesting. I've been on this couch for a year. I might've slept in my bedroom twice. So he came to me and cried. And then I followed him and he jumped on the bed. So I sat on the bed and then he was like, okay. He really, so I was like, okay, well, okay, well, I'll just spend my time in my room. And we've been together, spending time together. I'm like, you really are happy now that I'm, because he could easily sit with me on the couch, but he really like made me go lay in the bed and just hang out. And so <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious um, that, that that was one of the cards that we had. And I just, just looking at his little beautiful face and, He's like, okay, good. She's here. Sit right here next to me. Um, another funny incident. Right after that, we had a class that evening. And the first thing that we did in the class was dance to like free our energy and stuff. So I saw, um, I saw, saw immediately how the cards went into action as far as integrating those, those particular things. Mm hmm did you dance Terry did I dance well you know what I swim every day so I do take I make those movements and I become very um aware of the different movements that I do so one of those things is I do sort of like a, a grapevine dance in, in the water and so I kind of move I kind of move through that so yeah so I dance every day, but I don't think about it as, as that dancing, but it, it definitely is because it's a lot of the dancing steps that we do. So yeah, I dance. I meditate. 
last, even last night, I sat outside with the cats, the crazy cats that just eat at my house and boss me around also. Um, <laughs> but I was washing the peacock feathers and they were like around me and one in particular, he's just like watching me. And um, even a raccoon, he came super close. He was just sitting out there and I was like, wow, I hope nothing happens. <laughs> but the raccoon came out there with us. And uh, he flipped over the food, but it was funny because I was thinking, wow, like I'm, I go out there to feed them, but I've never like sat out there with them just sitting. So that was cool. You're sort of like Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> and there is a loud bluebird out there too. He's, it seems like he's the commander of a lot. I don't know. <laughs> the, it sounds like the peacocks are talking to this this blue jay. It's really interesting. Well, well, I, because I'm in the north, right? The birds are flying south. Today there was a flock of gulls. Like we don't have seagulls here, but we have Franklin gulls. And at about seven o'clock this morning, it I felt that I was beside the the, the ocean because they were so loud and swooping down and stuff. So I I guess they're on their way further south because it's uh, getting colder here and stuff. But, you know, the water hasn't frozen over, but it was just interesting to see all the, the galls and the sounds that they were making and they're swooping and sw <laughs> it was quite entertaining actually. Max, I didn't know if you wanted to comment on the cards last week and how you saw them. You don't have to, but Okay, and so, Terry, what do you got for us this week, Terry? Well, I'm going to uh, pull a card from the Gratitude Oracle, and um, oh, I'm no, I'm not going to pull. I'm going to pull three cards from the Gratitude Oracle, and um, so. So the first card is presence. The next one is contemplation. And the third one is between. I've also got another one, but that one will come at the end. Um, so it, it's just, it's very interesting because I think right now we've been going through so much so much energy fluctuations. And I think a lot of people are feeling very scattered. And I think it may be a time for us just to feel present in ourselves and, and present, you know, if you've ever done any mindfulness practices, but it's just a bringing yourself back into that heart space instead of having our energies all over the place because there's so much fluctuation going on that, um, we need to bring ourselves together and, and just feel our presence in the present moment and not worry about what's going to happen in three weeks from now or a month from now or any of that because things are changing, things are shifting, and we're, we're hearing that all the time. And when we bring, that, bring our presence together, um, you know, we're in that in-between state right now uh, between because all the things are, that are going on around there, we're between things. And so if we take the time that we take with our, in, in that present moment and just contemplate and just look at where you have been in your life, what are the things that have affected you? Look at what you're ready to um, release to move forward into the new energy, what direction is it that you want to bring your life into? It's it's not a matter, you've, you've been building energy up until this time, up until this point. All of your experiences have been valuable. Now, if you take the time to contemplate and look at them and say, wow, this is what 
I've overcome. This is what I've learned. This is what challenges I've, I've faced and I've been able to overcome that. How have I grown, you know, like from where I was a year ago, six months ago, where am I now? Just contemplate on your growth instead of getting on that wheel, that hamster wheel and going round and round. Take the time right now to just be focused in your present moment. And you will find that you can see your progression um, and your development, your, your spiritual development. Um, I can say for myself, over the last few days, I've been doing a lot of contemplation. And it's like, my goodness, what I understood a year ago and what I understand now just about myself, I'm really quite surprised at how I have let go of things and how I've changed. And the change happens within yourself before you can change things around you. So you have to just take that time to think about those things. And then the last card that popped up was nature's beauty. So again, we've got the whole idea of nature um, following through from last week. But taking that time even to, to go out and be present in nature, contemplate in nature, um, that nature neutralizes the energies that are around us. You know, like close your phone off, turn off the computer, go for a walk and, and leave your phone at home and just be surrounded by the natural world instead of all of the other stuff that bombards us. And you will find that you are going to be more centered and, and calmer, especially during the energies. And when we talk about flow, you know, we're allowing the flow to move through us, not riding it, just allowing the flow to move through us. And, and even if the energies are erratic, let them flow through you instead of holding on to them. And nature is a great way to allow us that helps allow that energy to move through us instead of uh, trying to figure it out. Just sometimes we just need to allow it to move through. And um, so I, I think the theme for this week is, is about that, is sitting with these energies, sitting with ourselves, contemplating and, and going out and um, just being with nature and and listen and sometimes you know you can't be in nature whether it's climate or whatever but you know what if you have some crystals if you've got plants any of those things if you've got you know take a bath turn on some beautiful lights put light a candle use some essential oils if you can't those are all natural elements and you know shut off the phone shut off the computer and just be in the space and surround yourself with natural things and just absorb that energy so that you can um, allow those erratic energies to just flow through you and out of you and, and you don't have to hold on to them. That's my... That sounds so soothing and relaxing. <laughs> it really did. It's like, ah... Um, I was looking this up and it says, well, today is November 7th and it said liberal and quite easy on social norms and tribes to belong to. November 7th is a date when we connect to the pure intention and honesty that sparks the fire in our hearts. This is a time when stress and innovation combine into one when leaders are overthrown and new people are found in the position of power. Um, in astrology, the number 11 is associated with the zodiac Aquarius, ruled by the planet Uranus. People born under this sign are seen as innovative, independent, and forward thinking. The number 11 is associated with friendships, social networks, and humanitarian causes. It represents our aspirations, dreams, and the future. Those with the strong 11th house placement in their birth chart are have a strong desire for to make a positive impact um it's associated with intuition and spiritual awakening it's believed to be a sign that you are on the path and that your spiritual journey is progressing it's so 
associated with alignment and synchronicity. The number 11 symbolizes um, alignment and synchronicity. It's believed to be a sign that the universe is aligning in your favor with manifestation and divine guidance. The number 11 is associated with the power of thoughts and intentions. It is believed to be a reminder to stay focused on your desires and your goals as your thoughts and powers um, power to create your reality, um, balance and harmony. So the union between the spiritual and the physical, and the inner and the outer, and the gateway for transformation, offer an opportunity for transformation and growth. And that I feel like it aligns with the cards that you presented. Um, a lot of times people are busy doing, but sometimes we do have to reflect and think about what we want to bring it closer to our realm. It's um, it's funny because you can use the word manifest, right? But when you begin to focus on things, it you you draw closer to it because all those other things that you don't want, they still exist, right? Like you said, you can't change everything, right? You're not you're not literally changing everything. You're just bringing yourself closer to the things that you actually desire. You're just you're just moving where you are, not necessarily. And so now the world around you is changed because you've changed your vantage point, your viewpoint, and your perspective. Now my my viewpoint and vantage point is of positivity in a higher place. You know, a lot of times we don't know certain things exist. There's really beautiful places in the world that we've not even seen. And what if no one ever showed it to you? You know what I mean? Like you would not know the beautiful things beyond the Grand Canyon and up under the ocean and, and all these places, they all exist at once. So the most horrible things exist while the most beautiful things exist. If we keep our mind focused on these negative things, then we are not going to be able to exist in the realm of the beauty and possible uh, positive things. So that's all we're doing is just transitioning from this place to that place. I've decided I can move from anger into joy and happiness and forgiveness. I can move from fear to faith and confidence and things like that. But first we begin to contemplate where we are and what we actually desire instead of just reacting to everything that's around us. You know, one of the things that I do uh, I don't always do a lot of affirmations, but my my first thing when I get up in the morning is that I say I want to live, I want to be on my highest timeline for my soul's evolution. And so the things that happen to me during the day or the things that come into my life, the way that I've um, worked um, or, or the things that I've done over the over the months and whatever, I believe you know by by saying that my intention is that I'm I'm here to for my soul's evolution, and so I think that the things that come in, I've already put it into my field that I need to understand that, and so rather than me manifesting. Um, uh, I don't know, a, a, a new car. Is it, you know, is my soul's purpose, you know, like, I'll need a new vehicle. So this is, you know, so what is it I'm going to need? So it, it's the way that we approach things. And that changes everything. Because then we'll manifest, we can bring into life, the things that we need for our evolution, not because they you want it for status or whatever it is. Paths cleared, obstacles removed, nothing stands in my way. Mm -hmm. So we will end on that note, unless you have something else. Nope. And we will begin our readings. Bye. Have a great week. <laughs>